Hello and welcome to the channel. And welcome to our absolute beginner's guide to Farming Simulator. The fact that you're here tells me two things. One, you finally got your hands on a copy of Farming Simulator. And two, you want to learn how to play as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The first thing I recommend you do is hit the pause button. By hitting the pause button on your keyboard. Simple as that. Now, at the top left of the screen, you can see our controls menu. So the second thing I recommend you do is you open the menu. This takes you to the menu command and all your options. The first thing you see is a map. Your farm is centered in that map. If you want to see exactly what land you own, you can hit the X key and it'll highlight your farm in blue. Hit X again and it unhighlights your farm. Next, what we want to do is we want to go down to the options menu. Hover over the left of your screen and use your mouse wheel to go all the way down to this tractor icon. This is going to bring up a game settings menu. <clears throat> As you can see, the game is paused. You can change the name of your save game to anything you want. Auto save interval is next. You can change that to 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or turn it off and only save manually when you want to. The option to save the game is down at the bottom of the screen. If you have it off, don't forget to save before quitting. The second thing to learn about this auto save feature is it only works when you open up this menu tab. You can play for an hour without opening the menu tab. And even if your game is set to save every five minutes, it will not do it until you open the menu. So try not to forget to open the menu once in a while and save the game. I tend to use the menu a lot, especially the map feature, so it saves for me on a regular basis. The next thing you want to do is change your game speed. By default, it came at 5. <clears throat> I recommend you change it down to real time. Time passes in the game based on what you set that setting to. So five times, it'll pass five times quicker than it would based on real time. Note tractors, combines, and other equipment only operate in real time. Even if you have the game set at five times or ten times speed, the hour will pass by more quickly, but your tractor will be moving in real time and it will only do field work in real time. <clears throat> Hopefully when you selected your game, you selected easy mode. The next option is traffic. You can turn this on and off. It affects how much traffic there is going to be on the roads when you're driving or you can have no traffic on the roads so you don't have to worry about hitting cars the next is seasons this only applies to farming simulator 22 if you have a copy of farming simulator 19 you don't have to worry about it 
by default the game comes with seasons on, days per month is one, which means each time the day passes, you will enter a new season. You can extend the length of a season up to 28 days. As a beginner, or even on farms you get later on when you're more experienced, when you're starting out, I recommend one day per season. If you turn this off, you will be able to plant crops at any time of the year. Now, as you know, in real life, the year is divided into four seasons, which are divided into four months. So, as I said, you can then change the day up to 28 days per month. So let's put seasonal growth back on, because it's the most fun. <clears throat> if you have seasonal growth off, or even if you're playing with seasons on, you can set a fixed visual month, January, October, September, July. If I'm playing with seasons growth off, I usually set it for a summer month. That way everything's nice and green. But let's turn that for by default back to off. We'll leave snow on because yes, we hopefully want to see snow. Now this is an odd one. Crop the scrunch destruction is on by default. I recommend you turn that off and you'll see why when we watch the AI work is working or if you accidentally drive across a field you're not crushing all your crops and decreasing the yield. Periodic plowing is off by default, I recommend you turn it on. It helps improve the yield of your crops. Field stones, by default, comes as on. I recommend you turn it off. At least while you're learning, it's one less thing to worry about. <clears throat> Basically what field stones mean is when you're plowing or cultivating, your equipment will bring up stones from under the soil surface. Those stones, if not removed, can then damage other equipment, such as cedars, mowers, and combines. To get rid of them requires either renting or buying more equipment, and that's going to cost you more money. Now, for those of you that didn't watch the intro to my channel, I farmed for 20 years. The farm we were on, very, very rarely did we have stones get brought up in the field. The soil was deep enough and the bedrock was far enough down that we didn't have to worry about stones. Most farms don't have to worry about them. Depending on the ground type, some do. Small stones really aren't a bother because a cultivator or an implement will just pass right over them. Big stones are a problem. And farmers use specialized equipment to get rid of those. You'll learn more about stones later on. Lime, by default, the requirement is on, which means every three years or every three harvests, you have to lime your fields. This helps with the pH balance in real life and is simulated in the game. Weeds are on, which means we have to worry about when our crop grows, we have to get rid of those weeds. And we'll show you how to do that too in a future tutorial. Dirt. <clears throat> I recommend you set this to slow. I haven't done any experiments yet in Farming Simulator 22. 
but in Farming Simulator 19, higher dirt speeds such as medium or fast meant your tractors got dirty quicker and the amount of dirt also affected the ah, what's the word I'm looking for um, the condition of your equipment and how often you needed to repair it automatic engine start on or off if you have it on means when you climb in a vehicle the engine will start when you get out it'll automatically turn off you don't have to worry about the key I personally prefer to have it on and again you'll see why later on stop and go braking is on by default don't worry about these trailer fill limit is off this is a more advanced feature Basically, while I'm turning it on, what it means is if you fill a trailer with grain, it'll reach its maximum capacity. Let's say the trailer is designed for 60,000 bushels, uh, and you put those in there, no problem. But if you put something heavy in there, heavier than, let's say, grain, because uh, you want to use your trailer to haul... Ooh, rocks. Well, the trailer's weight limit is going to get reached a lot quicker by rocks than it would by grain. And that affects vehicle handling, so turn it off for now. Fuel usage. The game, for some reason, on easy mode sets it to def normal. I recommend turning it to slow. This will help reduce your costs. Now, really important, AI workers. We'll see them in action in a few minutes. But basically what they do is they will continue working while you're busy doing something else. So if your combine's harvesting a field, you can tell an AI worker to continue while you go and cultivate or seed another field. I recommend turning all of these off because the game charges you 1.5 times the base cost for things like seeds that means that it'll charge you 1.5 times the cost of a pallet of seeds a pallet of seeds in the store costs a thousand dollars you don't want to be paying 1.5 times that to get the same amount of seed okay so those options are taken care of now let's move on to the next menu which are the general settings so in general settings the first option you see is help window one you can also access the help window by pressing F1. That's that menu we saw at the top left of our screen. Colorblind mode, leave it off unless you are colorblind. And I'm not, so I don't know exactly how it changes the colors, but it makes it easier for a colorblind person to see. Interactive zone markers, leave them on. And leave field info on. I'll show you both of those in a second. Money, you can change from dollars to pounds to euros. It doesn't affect the cost of anything. There is no currency conversion. It's just a preference depending on where you are. We're playing on Elm Creek, which is a North American map. So we're going to leave it on dollars. Also, most of our viewers come from North America. So it makes more sense to them. You can change the measuring unit from miles to kilometers. I leave it on miles. I'm kind of old school. When I grew up on the farm, our tractors were, speedometers were all in miles. So I'm more familiar with miles than I am with kilometers as far as tractors go. Cars? Yeah, no problem. Temperature unit. Now, having said I'm old school, I've also been around long enough to know both systems of measurement. 
In Canada, every day I check the weather and it's always displayed in Celsius. So I'm now more used to that than I was to Fahrenheit, even though I know the Fahrenheit system. Area unit can be set to either acres or hectares. I leave it on acres. As I said, again, growing up on the farm, I knew our farm was 330 some acres. I could not tell you how many hectares it was. Radio, basically there's music that plays in game if you wanted to, and you can select whether you want it in the vehicle or whether you want it playing all the time. Don't adjust any of these settings for now. Um, the one I would check is steering back speed. By default, I think it comes at 50%. Change that to 100%. Especially if you're playing with either mouse and keyboard or the gamepad. If you're playing with a steering wheel, it doesn't really matter. Basically what that does, it affects whether the wheels will default to the straight position from being turned or not. For me, it makes it easier playing on a keyboard to have the wheels straighten out as I come out of the turn and have them do it automatically. Gear shift mode, I would leave that as automatic until you're more experienced, but you can change it to manual or manual with clutch. That's just another set of variables you have to worry about. Let the game take care of your gears for now. Speedometer. This setting will display both your engine speed as in revolutions per minute, as well as the speed the vehicle is moving at. We'll look at that in one more minute. Switch to trains, leave on. We'll get into trains in a future episode. And then sound, you can adjust these as needed, depending on what you like for your volumes. Once you've done that, hit save again. These general settings will be saved across the board. So if you start a new map and a new game, these settings will be saved. The only ones you will have to worry about are the game settings, which will change per map. Okay. So we've had a look at how to set up your game. Let's go back. We'll hit escape and we'll go back to the game. Take the game off pause. And as I said, assuming you selected Erlingrad as your map, which hopefully you did because it's the easiest map to learn on, you will find yourself standing on the front porch of your farmhouse. The farmhouse is your sleep trigger. And at the end of the day, you'll want to go to sleep so the night passes quickly. More on that later. For now, let's follow the icons and the tutorial. So it gives you a quick guided tour. Um, it tells you how to enter a vehicle by pressing E. And you can look at the top left menu and it'll tell you what to do there too. So we want to attach the front header to the combine and we're going to press the Q key. <clears throat> G will switch between the header and the combine itself. X will unfold the combine or fold it back up. And B will turn it, the header on or off. We don't have engine start on. So, I'm going to do it manually by pressing the Enter key. What the tutorial doesn't explain to you is just above the controls menu, 
is you've got an icon of your combine and its header. You can see the header is a lighter shade of white than the combine itself, which means you've got your header selected. So the game wants us to lower our header by pressing the B key and then the B key. B as in Bravo. First we need to unfold our, head, our combine. While that's unfolding, I'll just turn the steering wheel and as soon as I let go of the keys, the wheels straighten out again. That's what I mean by your turning sensitivity. So now we're ready to go. Let's start harvesting. Press the B key as in Bravo to start your header. W, A, S, and D will move your vehicle around, same as in most games. With a combine, you can either turn on straw swath or turn it off. By disabling the straw swath, what you do is you enable the chopper at the back of the combine, which chops the straw into fine pieces and spreads it across the field so it can be reabsorbed. If you want to leave a swath, basically a row of straw, leave it enabled and you can then come along later and bail that. So here we go. When we get here, the game is going to tell us, good job. Now it's going to tell us we want to hire a worker because we want to move on to something different. So press H to hire a worker and we'll press E to exit the vehicle. See the work has taken over and the combine keeps harvesting without us. Combine's going to turn around and it's going to keep on going. Now the game wants us to move to the next tractor, actually the next tutorial spot, which is where the next tractor is located. When we get here, it's going to tell us we have to get in the tractor, attach the tools and start cultivating the field. So let's go ahead and get in, press E again. Press Q to attach the cultivator and press Q again to select the front weight. Now don't forget, we don't want the front weight selected because we don't need to raise and lower that. What we do need to raise and lower is our cultivator. So we'll go ahead, press enter and start the engine. Move up to the edge of the field, press V as in Victor to lower. First we have to press G to select the cultivator. Then see how it's highlighted in white. Then press V to lower the cultivator. Now we can start work. And you can see the cultivators digging up the field. Game's gonna tell us again to continue and hire a worker. Instead of having to walk across the field as we did last time, we can use the tab key to switch to our next vehicle or the left shift key plus tab to switch back to the previous vehicle. So let's switch to our next vehicle. We have to press OK first, tab. Here we are at the next vehicle. Let's get out and t see what it's telling us to do. Okay, it's telling us to do exactly the same thing as we've done before. Get in the vehicle, start the engine by pressing enter and hit Q to attach the front weight as well as the cedar. Now it tells you what the cedar commands are. And it's telling us we need to select canola because we're in August 
and canola is the only crop that can be planted in August. So let's press OK. We'll hit the Y key several times until the little yellow flower icon comes up, which is canola. I'll quickly scroll through these and tell you what they are. So that's canola. That's soya bean. That's oilseed radish. That'll be covered in a future topic. That's grass seed. That's sorghum, which is another grain crop. That's wheat. That's barley. That's oats. Oats, wheat, and barley grow. And back to canola. So let's move up to the side of the field. We'll look at our tractor icon. Yes, it's selected the cedar because it's on the rear of the tractor. So we'll press V to lower the cedar, <coughs> Victor, and then B as in Bravo to start the cedar and turn it on. First, we need to unfold the cedar. I keep forgetting we need to unfold things. <coughs> Most of the time, I already have them unfolded. So then we press the W key and we move forward. This pretty much concludes our guided tour. It's going to ask us if we want to hire another worker to finish seeding the field. We have enough money, so let's go ahead and do that. So press H to hire the worker and he'll take over from us and hopefully the combine will move out of the way otherwise we're going to get an error message in a second saying helper so and so is blocked nope it looks like we're good he moved out of the way in time so we'll let the helper finish seeding the field now see how he's driving over our previous field as he backs up and he turns around if we had crop destruction on he would have just crushed some of the crops had the combine not already harvested it. so that's why I recommend turning crop destruction off especially if you're using workers let's tab to our next vehicle again it wants us to get in and attach the trailer so we'll press Q to attach the trailer and we'll press OK. We won't bother starting the combine, sorry, the tractor, because we have no need. When you do go, if, or if you do go to unload the trailer from the combine, press the N key to open the cover and that'll allow the crop to be dumped into the harvester or into the trailer from the harvester. See our combine's almost finished. We can hop back in. And now he's finished. So what we want to do is we want to dump our grain into the trailer. We have 3,696 liters of wheat. So we've pressed O to extend our pipe or our auger. We drive till we're at the trailer and it will dump the grain into the trailer. Great work. Grain is being dumped into your trailer. Obviously, wait until it's completely unloaded until you move the combine. Press O to put the pipe back in. And then we'll put the combine away because none of our other fields are ready to be harvested. What we'll do is we'll put the header on the header trailer. So you just kind of line up with the header trailer. Press Q to detach the header. Small bug there. There it's fixed itself. 
and then again we maneuver around and we'll back the combine up to the trailer and we'll attach the trailer. There we go, cue to attach. I'm not quite sure where to park the combine and the trailer. But we don't need it right now, so let's park it over here. Beside the shed. If you did as I said and you have automatic engine start off, don't forget to press the enter key to turn the engine off. Let's hit E to exit the combine. You can see our cultivate is almost finished. We'll give him a couple of minutes to finish up and then we'll go check on the cedar. He should be on his last run, which it looks like, yes, he is. As soon as he's done, we'll get a message saying, Helper C has completed their task. Now back to the field info menu that we talked about earlier. With this menu on, by standing in the field, it'll tell you A, who owns it, what the condition of the field is, whether it's planted or not, whether it's got weeds, whether it needs lime, or whether it needs plowing. Let's run back to this other field. And we'll look at the menu there too. Okay, so it tells you it was, or it is owned by us. It was a field of wheat. It's now been harvested. And so on and so on. Let's tab to our cedar. He's almost finished. We'll let him finish, and then that'll conclude this video. You're up and running, you've got your first fields harvested. What we'll do in the next video is we'll cover what to do with the straw that we have in the other field, how we get rid of the needing lime state or how to add lime to a field as well as where to sell the grain we just harvested. And then hopefully we'll have time to cover a few other topics. Now while he's Harvesting, like I said earlier, what I would recommend doing is tabbing one more time until you get to your pickup truck. If you're in no rush to begin lesson two or get going, what I recommend doing, see, it's saving now and it's been longer than 15 minutes, is either driving around the map and taking a look at what's out there or you can, as I showed you earlier, click on the buildings and it'll show you what they are. So we have the cereal factory, we have the grocery store, the fast food restaurant, which looks strangely like a Taco Bell, the bakery, the vehicle store, which we will be going to next tutorial. So just take some time and drive around the map and observe the sites. Elm Creek is actually a very pretty map and has a lot to see. Well, I'm going to try and keep these, like I said, to about a 30 minute period. So that's our introduction to Elm Creek and farming simulator out of the way. Join me next time, as I said, and we'll look at at some more advanced features such as bailing the straw, renting equipment, purchasing equipment, and selling our grains. So thank you for watching, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you next time.